Okay, so, so far we've focused primarily on 3D Studio Max and getting the 2.2 uh, gamma uh, settings set in, in that. Uh, now what we've got is we've got a very basic scene. Uh, we've got a V-Ray Sun and we've got our scene here in a, uh, a V-Ray physical camera as well. And what we need to do is we need to set up this physical workflow uh, within uh, V-Ray itself. So we'll do that by going to our render settings. So you can press F10 uh, to do that. And then if you scroll down to the color mapping settings, that is where we'll be spending most of our time uh, for now. The first thing to notice is that, that we have the type uh, and we have a drop down mark. Uh, box. We've got linear multiply, exponential, Reinhardt. Those are generally the three that that most people uh, tend to use. And um, this must be linear multiply, really, to stay in a linear workflow. The, basically, where the entire math uh, and the compositing is correct. Now, other types can be used at this stage, but it would be deferring from the linear workflow. The linear mo uh, multiply mode will simply multiply the final image uh, colors based on their brightness. Color components that are too bright uh, above 1.0 or 255 will be clipped. And this can result in burnt out spots near bright light sources. We then have uh, the dark and uh, bright multipliers. These are just tone mapping multipliers. Uh, these should be kept to 1.0 uh, to maintain the linear workflow. So we'll leave those like that. Uh, we then have the gamma. This parameter allows us to, uh, to control the gamma correction for the output image regardless of the color mapping mode. Note that the value here is the inverse of the one used for the gamma correction color mapping type. For example, to correct the image for a 2.2 gamma display, you should set this to 2.2. So let's do that. There we go, 2.2. We then have a series of tick boxes on the right hand side. Uh, we'll briefly run through each of these. The first one is subpixel mapping. This controls whether the color mapping will be applied to the final image pixels or to the individual subpixel samples. So in older versions of V-Ray, this option was always assumed to be on. However, its default value is now off as this produces more correct renderings, especially if you use the universal settings approach as some people do. We then got the clamp output uh, tick box. This clamps colors based on the clamp level and carries this out after color mapping. In some situations, this may be undesirable. For example, if you wish to anti-alias HDR uh, parts of the image uh, too, in that case, turn clamping off. Note that if you tick subpixel mapping or clamp output, then technically, you, you, in my opinion, you, you are deferring from linear gamma workflow. If you're having issues with anti-aliasing or blown out pixels, it is best to start by ticking subpixel mapping. If this doesn't work, then try ticking the clamp output. But the drawback to clamping the output is that you will lose that high dynamic range of colors that you would be uh, best kept in there. We then have the effect background, which by default is ticked. If this is off, uh, color mapping will not affect colors belonging to the background. The next one is don't affect colors, uh, adaptation only. When this parameter is on, the color mapping will not be applied to the final image. However, V-Ray will proceed with all its calculations as though color mapping is applied, e.g. the noise levels will be corrected accordingly. This can be useful, for example, if you know that you will apply some color correction to the image later on, but wish to keep the rendering itself in linear space for compositing purposes. Essentially, for the settings we've outlined above, this tells V-Ray to work in linear space. So we're going to set it, and we're going to tick it, don't affect colors. Finally, we have the linear workflow uh, checkbox. And uh, you'd hope uh, that if you just tick that box, then everything would get sorted for you. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, it is quite simply a workaround. And um, yeah, essentially it's taking, it enables you to take old scenes and do sort of this crude uh, convert to bring them into the linear workflow, but it's, it's not really to be used in a standard linear workflow. So yeah, just essentially just ignore that unless you're uh, wanting to convert old files that weren't done in linear workflow.